So in part four of my five steps of cultural repair, I touched on the importance of making things. And in this video, I want to explore very briefly the intersection of making and culture. I think it's going to turn into a series one day because there's a lot at this intersection, but let's make a start by exploring the idea that we are constantly making and being made along with the rest of the world. And we'll do an experiment as well. Just a little thing. Welcome, I'm Liz Scarf, uh, and this is my little, uh, I don't know what it is, collaborative learning for cultural repair and exploration. So let's do that, start the experiment first. So think of something that you do that you think is a bit of a waste of time. Um, and maybe you feel a little self-critical about it, right? So social media scrolling will be a common one, but you know, others are good too, whatever you've got. Um, so take a moment to think of that and then put it aside for a bit. We're going to come back to it. Okay. So I find it very compelling to point out all the things that are wrong with the world. And I think this is a fairly common affliction in Western culture. So ideological ranting as a lifestyle choice is a problem both culturally and personally. And I think it often reflects a kind of inner disempowerment. It kind of goes like, um, goes like this. Uh, I don't believe I can create something of value. So instead I'll criticize everything else or everything everyone else is creating to feel powerful instead. I think this is pretty common. It's pretty, let's say it's seductive and compelling. I certainly find it that way. But yeah, I think it's problematic. But I do think engaging in thoughtful and critical analysis matters. And while that's actually quite different to ideological ranting, I do think it's also important to engage in building things and so making things so we're, that we're creating and not just critiquing. And I think one, one way we can think about a culture, it's, it's that a culture is a making collective. So groups that makes, make things together, and not just human groups, because not only humans have culture, but all things, all peoples come together and make things. And in this way, I think we, we can think about cultures beyond humans at the center, because um, culture implicates everyone and everything, not just humans, because we're all continually making and being made, right? Um, so I recently came across the concept of humans, uh, but let's extend this to all persons, so plants, animals, fungi, but that all of us are geosocial formations. <laughs> it's so wild. And I love this, this quote by um, Vladimir Verdet, Vernadsky, sorry, a Russian-Ukrainian geomineralogist. Um, I'll put the citation in the notes, so you may not have got the spelling from my pronunciation. Anyway, he says, the material of Earth's crust has been packaged into myriad moving beings whose reproduction and growth build and break down matter on a global scale. We are walking, talking minerals. I think if we added that, like extended it to other beings, right? Like let's add dogs, they are wolfing, scratching minerals or trees are breathing, photosynthesizing minerals. Like it's such an interesting way to think about life as the world here doing things uh, with minerals actually. And I just thought it was really entertaining and a, an interesting way to um, change thinking a little bit about the nature of, of, of being, right? But making, if I got back on track, making is the nature of nature, surely, right? Like it's continuously making. Even when something looks like it's being unmade, something else is being made. And like compost is a really um, classic example of that, right? Now, I think about making requiring three main elements, right? A maker, uh, maker, materials and mechanisms. So mechanisms can be tools and processes. So an easy example is this sock I'm making. Yes, I am fitting in a little piece of knitting because I just can't resist. But let's say it's an easy example for thinking about making, right? I'm the maker. This yarn is the material. And these needles are tools. And the techniques or the processes is the technique of knitting. So making loops, basically, um, that I can use to transform this into this. And um, if you're curious, this is, pattern is the little little black socks by Summer Lee. Anyway, obviously the whole assemblage implicated in the making of a sock also includes the factory that made the needles, 
um, again there's makers materials and mechanisms happening there the sheep that grew the wool right is again a maker using materials like grass and mechanisms hair growing however that happens um, soil water sun that fed the grass and I tend to think in, in this kind of assemblage tracking everything goes back to the sun at the end anyway um, but I think as mapping out maker assemblages is really interesting especially thinking about the nature of the relationships between the different kind of actors in the in the assemblage right it's not actually the topic of this video so I'm gonna get back on track just I do think it's interesting but here I want to wonder together about being made right so in western culture we would tend to think of ourselves more often in the maker role like I'm the maker making the sock right I'm doing the thing you know this is all about human agency and exceptionalism etc and we often don't think about ourselves as an as an ongoing outcome of making processes that somehow as I'm making the sock that process is somehow making me right so there are makers materials and mechanisms that are resulting in us uh, this fries my noodle a little bit it's pretty wild so like some examples might help one one example it's kind of getting a lot of popular uh, discussion these days is human or anyone's digestion basically but um, that we need bacteria to create all kinds of essential things for us to live right we can't do it on our own as an organism we can't digest food without bacteria and so we, we could say very simplistically but not inaccurately that bacteria are makers of humans aren't they using materials from digestion and using mysterious mechanisms to create sustain reproduce life right and i mean okay i don't understand really the mechanisms of digestion and what bacteria do but neither does science so i th think that's kind of okay but a more ex abstract example too right i think is about habits and so there's a concept in the um, questionable world of habit law or okay the habit industry that our identity is a result of all the daily things we do now obviously who we are is more complex than this but i think the idea has some value and uh, like relevance when we can expand it into the idea of being made so that look, for me it looks like sitting with the question how are the actions of my every day so the ways I am engaging with and engaged by the world how is that making me and what do I think about the results and this is a different way of thinking about daily choices right so if we come back to our experiment now so think back to that thing you do that feels like a waste of time now consider that this activity is making you in some way what is it making you into or making in you and what do you think about this so let's say for me it's social media scrolling right I'll use this one because it's a really common example so great that I think it's a waste of time I think that's true yep but if I also now wonder how has that time on social media been a process of making me in some way let's say the social media company is the maker content and light might be the materials the algorithms and screens etc the mechanisms I'm, I haven't really thought this through hugely in depth but you know we could uh, position it like that honestly the lost time becomes the least of my concerns when I think about it like this because I'm pretty sure I don't like what scrolling social media makes of me so here's where my absolute conviction that making three-dimensional objects with our hands is a practice of cultural repair because when we make things we are also getting made and in ways that I think are brilliant and sorely needed um, in Western culture and they're unpredictable and somewhat mysterious too right so I think making things makes in us creativity ingenuity patience attention to detail love of beauty, extended con concentration spans, appreciation of quality and longevity, agency, social connections, like I'm going to, there's so many, I'm going to stop there though, but I'm sure you can think of many more things that making makes. Stick them in the comments if you've got any extra ones that you think are particularly interesting as well, right?
So, but I'll finish this off with some reflective questions uh, if you want them. So it's just, it's just to sit and think about in your life the ways in which you're engaging like who and what makes you we could think about that physiologically psychologically spiritually and how does that making happen so what constitutes the maker the materials and the mechanism or the, the tools the processes right and what are the things you are doing or engaging with um, in the world that is making you in ways that you value and then what are the things that you are doing that is making you in ways that you don't value and so I'm just yeah I think these are really interesting ways to think about how we are in the world is about how we are in the world makes us we're not just making things what we're doing is actually making and shaping our identity our physiology our relationality our spirituality our sense of meaning and purpose our intelligence our dexterity all of these things are continually being made and so I think kind of thinking taking some time to think about this is you know fun's the right word but <laughs> interesting anyway thanks for watching um, yeah if you want to hear more like and subscribe there's also a newsletter you can sign up to on my website I'll put all that in the details down below as well as that uh, the citation for that quote okay thanks for watching bye